what's up guys coyote works here taking you out with me on another adventure today <clears throat> well i'm not 100 percent sure what's in store for us we're still in that weird kind of weather time of year where there's snow in some places mud and sloppy roads and others so we're just gonna have to see where we can get to today Along the way, we'll do a little bit of our usual exploring, and then I've also got some other little treats planned for the trip. I'm gonna do a little bit of my specialty camp cooking. I'm gonna make up a Coyote Works version of a dirty rice using some wild game and some fresh ingredients. I'm gonna try out some new pieces of gear I got from my buddy Todd Stone down at Prepper Up. I wanna give a shout out to Prepper Up for being a channel sponsor of mine. Todd's been awesome about finding some of the little pieces of gear that I need to fill out my kit or replace stuff or upgrade things in here. And we'll probably get into a little bit of snow, a little bit of mud. We'll make camp somewhere around dark time in there and um, hopefully we'll see some cool sights along the way. All right, I'm breaking fresh tracks. Ooh, it's a little sloppy in here, huh? It didn't take me long to get past the point where most people ever get to. And from there forward, I just started chasing tracks. That's my words for just following roads that I've never been down before and trying to see new country. This trip was less about a particular destination and more about just exploring and going in a general direction just to see what kind of country I would cross and what kinds of things I might stumble on. All right, well, for about the last two hours, I've been winding my way across the desert, and I came up in here into the pine tree country, and I'm getting a little higher in elevation. Initially, I wasn't planning on coming up here into the forest, but there's not as much snow up here as I thought, so I'm continuing to push my way through the forest, and slowly but surely, I'm getting to a little bit more and a little bit more snow which I'm not having too much trouble uh, passing through the snow. My Jeep's doing pretty good. But the concern that I'm having right now is I am burning a lot of fuel because I'm pushing, you know, anywhere between five to eight inches worth of snow. I'm looking at my gas gauge and I'm down to a little over half a tank. So I'm gonna run until I get down to half a tank and then I'll throw my <clears throat> three gallon fuel can in. And then that'll pretty much have to be the apex of my journey. That'll be the extent of my fuel supply. I want to leave myself a little bit of a buffer zone for getting out of here in case I get some more snow tonight. Yeah, I think I might be able to crawl over this one, but I'm going to get out and walk it and check it out. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to clear this one. So hopefully, I'm going to go back and grab my gloves and hopefully I'll just be able to drag it out of the way. So this silky saw is a lifesaver for times like this. And I've actually got a pretty good breeze blowing, so I could either run into more blowdowns on my way in or have blowdowns fall after I pass that I need to clear on my way out. All right, this one's a detour around. This is a no-go. <laughs> that would take me an hour or two of cutting to get that one. So I think I'm just going to work around it. I scouted out a little path that I think I can drive right around it. I just got to be a little bit careful because there are some stumps and little hidden things back in here but I can follow my foot tracks I believe. There we go. Gotta go around that guy. And should be able to shoot right through here and right back out on my track. Perfect. Off we go. 
All right, check this out, guys. Oregon's largest juniper tree. I'm out here on the edge of the Fort Rock Valley up in the forest, and I haven't been by this tree in probably, oh, I don't know, maybe like 10 years or something. And I can't believe I even found it. But it's pretty crazy. This used to just be a juniper tree sitting out here, and now they built this little fence around it. Now this juniper tree behind me is three to four hundred years old if I remember right. After leaving the site of Oregon's largest juniper tree, I started skirting around the edges of an ancient lava flow, and soon I came to a spot that I haven't been to in a long time, but I've always loved. It's a place called the Blowouts, where there's a series of bubbles, or craters of sorts, that were formed when this lava flow was still active. They're pretty interesting formations, and I couldn't resist taking a little time to hike around them. Alright, well I'm sitting just over a half a tank, so I'm going to go ahead and dump my extra can of fuel in the Jeep, and then I'll have to, I'll have to hit the midpoint of my trip, somewhere within the next 30 or 40 miles or so, to make sure I have enough fuel to get back out of here. So this is pretty cool and somewhat rare out here. I uh, got down into this little area and there's a bunch of aspen trees in here, a bunch of thickets. So there must be a spring around here somewhere. Usually the aspen trees grow where there's surface water pretty close to the ground. All right, so I got to backtrack a little ways through here. I've kind of got through the mountains and now I should be, oh, five, six miles or so from kind of being on the edge of the desert again. So I'm gonna work my way back out towards a little more open country. At this point, I'm just kind of looking for a place that I might like to camp. All right, I finally found a spot to camp and I have probably an hour and 15 minutes of daylight left. And I'm super stoked because up on the hillside behind me, there's a thicket of mahogany and that stuff burns really good. And I've got a bunch of rocks, so I should be able to make a nice fire reflective wall. So I'm going to get cracking to get my camp set up. See, these trees right here are the mountain mahogany and I've got a nice thicket of them on this hillside. So this will be good stuff for cooking off of tonight. All right, first things first, I'm going to build a little fire pit. Right down there on a little flat spot. Alright, I got a little bit of a reflective wall built, got my fire going, got a nice little supply of firewood in. Now the nice thing about this mahogany is it's hard wood and it's hard to process, but it doesn't take very much because it burns a long time. Plus, I only have about an hour maybe left of daylight. So my next step set up my rooftop tent, then I'll grab my camp furniture and bring it over here and get ready to cook a delicious dinner. The rooftop tent's a snap to set up. Just take me a couple minutes. I start by pulling the cover off.
Now that the rooftop tent's set up, I'll grab my table, my chair, my I'll set up my ready light. All right, I've made a little divot right here that I'll put a pile of coals in, and that's what I'll set my pot over to cook. But in the meantime, I'm feeding the fire with some smaller wood so it doesn't take too awful long to build up a bit a bed of coals. I've got a pretty good bed of coals going here, but I'll just let that burn down a little bit while I show you guys what I'm making for dinner. All right, so tonight we're having some dirty rice coyote work style. So let me show you guys the ingredients for this. So I've got some wild goose sausage, some cilantro, of course, because I put cilantro in everything, a carrot, celery, a clove of garlic, a whole onion, a package of, and I just use this Zatarain's Dirty Rice um, pre-packaged rice mix. It has a little bit of flavor to it. And then a can of diced tomatoes. So what I'm going to do is process all these vegetables down, and then I'm going to put them in the pot and let them cook down a little bit, because especially the carrot takes a little while to soften up. And I want the vegetables nice and soft. So the first thing I'm going to do is process down the vegetables. And to process down the vegetables, you need a good knife. So tonight for my camp knife, I'm using this Charade SCHF 40 um, that I got from Todd down at Prepper Up, as you guys could probably guess. All right, so I've got all my vegetables cut. I'm gonna go in the pot with those. I'll smash up a clove of garlic. So I got all the vegetables in there. I threw a little butter in there too. And at this point, I'm gonna add a little Tabasco just for a little bit of heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, sea salt. Garlic salt first. Now a little pepper. And now I'm also gonna add my diced tomatoes because I want these to cook down really nice. And I'm gonna have to add a little bit more water to it. Okay, now I'm gonna get this on some coals. Now I'm gonna slice up my sausage. And this is some awesome sausage that I had made out of a goose, a wild goose. This was actually a Canadian, I think. So you can kind of see the sizes I'm slicing these into. About a half inch to three quarters of an inch thick slices. All right, this has been boiling for about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the sausage, the rice, and the cilantro in. I'll start with the cilantro. Now I'm gonna put the rice in. The rice takes about 25 minutes, so by the time the rice is tender, the sausage will be nice and cooked. I'm gonna have to get my utility knife here. And the sausage. Ah, that's looking good. Alright, I can smell it cooking. It's coming along good. It's got about 10 more minutes and my dinner will be ready. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna relax here and soak up the heat from the fire. All right, guys, let's try this. Mmm, damn, that looks good. I just don't think the light from my ready light and the fire is doing this justice. And this is so good, these nice plump chunks of sausage in here. Well, I've really outdone myself. Good bite to it. Just the right amount of Tabasco. See, this is what this is all about. Nice hot meal by a warm fire after a long day's worth of exploring. Life just doesn't really get any better than this. Last bite, time to do the dishes. Dish is done. There's a ton of this stew left, so I'm just gonna leave it sitting out here 
It might free to freeze overnight, it might not, but either way, I might just have it for lunch tomorrow. Well guys, that was a delicious meal. I'm full. Just sitting here enjoying the heat of the fire and drinking a little water before I go to bed and I think I'm going to mosey on up to the rooftop tent. All right, guys. Well, I think that's about as much as I can fit into one day. I'm comfortable, slid into my sleeping bag, and I'm looking forward to having a nice, comfortable, nice sleep after a full day of exploring. So that's it for me, guys. Coyote Works out. See you in the morning. Well, we got a little skip of snow this morning. Not too much. Just a little dusting. I got just a little skiff of snow on the camp. Not too much, but. Well, good morning, guys. I just got a fire going. And my stew from last night, I just have sitting kind of close to the fire so it can slowly absorb some heat. It's frozen solid as a rock. So once it thaws out a little bit, I'll drag some coals out. I had some drulvors and rusk this morning for breakfast. So that was about two hours ago. So by the time that gets warmed up, I'll have it for lunch and then I'll tear down my camp and be on my way. So I get asked a lot what I do with my tent after it gets snowed on. So most of the time out here in central Oregon, the weather, the humidity is low enough and the air is dry enough that if I can just get the sun to hit it for oh, even a half hour or so in the morning, it'll dry off. Another question I get a lot is about this ready light and how often I need to plug it in and charge it. Well, again, as long as I can set it in the sun for an hour or two while I'm breaking camp in the morning, it runs pretty much perpetually. The sun's coming out and it's warming up. I'm thinking it's probably maybe just at or just over freezing right now <clears throat> and probably a little warmer where the sun's hitting. So I'm going to need to break camp and hit the road because I've got to cross some soft desert valleys to get back to a main gravel road and if it gets too soft I could have some trouble out there so I'm gonna eat a little lunch my stew's almost done reheating enjoy my mango nectar and then uh, I'm gonna pack up camp and hit the road So a lot of guys ask me what kind of mileage I get when I'm out here. Well, there's how much I was averaging. Now that's from yesterday. I just left camp today. And yesterday for most of the day, I was pushing a good six, eight inches of snow and just grinding the Jeep. So that took my gas mileage all the way down to 10.7 miles per gallon. All right, let's get the GPS on, Let's see where we're going. All right, so here's where I am, and I'm gonna keep following this track and try to wind my way around until I get to here. So I've got about four miles to cross, and hopefully I won't hit anything um, impassable along the way. Ugh, this road's getting a little narrow here. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake. It's getting a little rocky in here. Sometimes for me, the enjoyment and satisfaction from a trip can be based on how cool specific sites that I saw on the trip were. Like, did I find any cool historic sites or any really unique terrain features? 
but other times when you're an explorer and a wanderer, the enjoyment of a trip can be based just on the amount of time and the amount of miles on desert two-track dirt roads you put in without encountering another person. For me, this was one of those trips. It was a success just based on the fact that I burned over a tank of gas and spent two full days out there and didn't see another person. Coyote Works, out.